morning, everybody, and I'm so happy that we can do this, that we can gather as a school family on this first Friday of the month through great technology. Boy, do I miss you all. I miss our young friends, and I miss seeing you, I miss hearing you, I miss being with you. Father Clark misses you too, and all our teachers and our staff and our students, and even Bailey misses you at lunchtime. He doesn't know what's going on either. It's so quiet out there. But I promise that when we all get together again, we're going to have one big, great party. We might even have to party in the parking lot. We'll have music and dancing and songs and food to celebrate once again as a family to come together. But in the meantime, we come and we pray, and we ask God to be with us in a special way this day on this first Friday of May, this month dedicated to our Blessed Mother, on the feast day of St. Joseph. And so, like the Holy Family, we too are a Holy Family, and we come and gather and worship God. And so we begin our prayers for one another, and we ask Jesus, Mary, and St. Joseph to watch over us, to watch over and keep our family safe and healthy. And we ask God also to pray and help those who are helping us by our state, our hospitals, our doctors, our nurses, all those who are trying to keep us safe and sound. So there's many things for us to pray, and we ask God to bless us as we begin our Mass now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, as we gather as the family of St. Margaret's School and the family of God, we offer to our Heavenly Father the holy sacrifice of the Mass. But first, we call to mind our sins, and we ask God for his mercy and his forgiveness. that by the example of St. Joseph and under his patronage, we may complete the works you set us to do and attain the rewards you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of Genesis. God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the divine image he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it for, you, for food for you. And to all the animals of the land, and all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Everything came, and morning followed, 
Evening came and morning followed and the sixth day. Thus the heavens and earth and all their array were completed. And so on the seventh day, God was finished with the work he had been doing. God rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he rested from all the work he had done in creation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. said, Where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Is he not the carpenter's son? 
His aunt, his mother, named Mary, and his brothers, James and Joseph, Simon and Judas, are not his sisters all with us. Where did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place in his own house. And he did not work mighty deeds there because of their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Again, welcome to our students, to our family and friends, and all of us who are gathered here today to celebrate, at least through technology, the beauty of another First Friday Mass as we gather as God's family on this May Day, May 1st. And we celebrate the beautiful feast day of St. Joseph the Worker. And this feast day was started way back in 1955 by Pope Pius XII. And he started this feast day of St. Joseph the Worker to help those workers and laborers who were really suffering great, great problems in their European countries. And St. Uh, Joseph was an inspiration for them to keep working hard, not to give up, but to always realize that work is so very important. That even as we heard in the first reading, God himself worked, and Jesus worked, and St. Joseph worked, and Mary worked, and all of us worked. Because work is so very important for us as human beings. We're called to work. And like Joseph and Jesus in the carpenter shop, you are called to work at home now too. Ever since we stopped school back in March. You're called to work in your house, and your teachers work from their homes, and all of us work together. Because back in the day of Jesus, he didn't go to school. He learned to be a carpenter like Joseph, his father. And the boys learned whatever the dads did, and the girls learned whatever the moms did, and they worked together as a family. And they had good days and they had bad days, just like you have good days in your home at work and you have bad days when you don't feel like getting out of bed maybe and doing your homework or doing the work from your teachers. And there's a struggle that goes on and we say, oh, I don't feel like doing this. And we give up and we get all cranky and we need to take a little break. And that's a good thing. We need those breaks. We need to go out. And there's a different type of learning that's going on, right, boys and girls? There's a whole different way of looking at the world now. You are part of history. And I want you to remember that. Because about 50, 60, 70 years from now, your children and your grandchildren are going to ask you, Grandma, Grandpa, what was it like to live in the year 2020? You can tell them all the good things that happened. And they're going to ask you, was it really true you didn't have to go to school? You're going to say yes. But we learned from an old thing we used to call a computer. Because God knows what's going to happen 70 years from now. There's going to be a whole new technology. And you're going to tell them that how you and your brothers and sisters sat around this computer and you still learned. That you still had dedicated teachers and principal who really wanted you to learn, even if it was difficult times. And all the fun things that you did together as a family. And all the wonderful things you will be written about in a history book. Remember that. And so maybe it's a good thing to do. Maybe it's a good project to do, especially for the older students, to write a journal. What do you do all day? What do you do? And how are you making out? Maybe you can tell your grandchildren what you did. Maybe another thing you can do is make a time capsule, put things together. So about 70 years from now, you can open up for your family and say, this is what we did. There's all wonderful little things that we can do to keep on working. Because working through labor and through work gives meaning to who we are. We realize that we're not just here to waste time and occupy space. That we all have a unique role to play. And as we grow, we try to find out, what does God want me to do? What does God want me to do in this world? And through work and through labor, God tells us. I want you to do a specific role, a specific thing. And also through work and through labor, we employ all the talents that we have, all the gifts we have, 
to make living a little bit better for our brothers and sisters, for our people in the world today. That God has given all of us different works to do and all different talents to make sure those works are done. And so St. Joseph the worker is the patron saint for all those who work. And so we turn to him and ask him to help us to work well. When I was in the sixth grade, our sixth grade teacher taught us a very valuable lesson. She used to say, whenever you would give in a piece of work from homework or a project, she always wanted you to sign on the top. And she tells the story of the great, great artist and the great sculptor Michelangelo. And Michelangelo is one of the greatest artists that is known to humanity. And he never signed any of his works except one. And the greatest work he ever did was called the Pieta. Maybe you've seen it, or if not, you can Google it. It's where Mary is holding the body of Jesus, her son, when they took him down from the cross. And she has a sash going over her robe. And in that sash, he signed his name. It's the only thing he ever signed. He was so proud of that. He cried when he finished it because it really, really looks like it's living, even though it's made out of marble. And our teacher used to tell us, that's what I want you to do. When you give me something, I want you to sign it because I want you to say, I'm proud of what I just gave to you. Maybe that's something for us to think about when we give in our homework or whatever work we do. Are we so proud that we're able to sign it? Because that's our name. That's our work. And so today, as we reflect on God's great gift to us and the great opportunities that we have, remember the work that God gives us. There's great dignity in work. And you're called to do your schoolwork. Do it well. Do it the best you can do, even through difficult times like this. You know your moms and dads are keeping you very safe. And our police and fire departments are keeping us very safe, so we don't have to worry about that. And we don't have to worry about getting sick because we're so protected by our moms and dads. And so we ask the Lord and we help those who are sick. We pray for them every day and pray for all our doctors and nurses and all those who take care of them as we thank God because they're working very hard too to keep us safe. And so boys and girls and moms and dads and grandparents and all those who are watching this today, Whatever work we're called to do, do it to the best that we can. Bring out the very best in one another. And until that day when all of us can be back together again, we keep each other in our prayers and in our thoughts, and we miss each other indeed. But boy, oh boy, what celebrations we're going to have when we get back together again at St. Margaret's School. And so now we turn to the Lord and we approach the throne of grace and favor and ask our God to hear our prayers as we thank our second and our seventh grade students who wrote these petitions for us. Girls, visitors, parents, please respond. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church that her prophetic voice continues to be a source of wisdom, guidance, and comfort during this challenging time. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all emergency responders and healthcare workers, that they may safely continue their efforts to care for and comfort the sick and dying. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the workers that add that as we celebrate the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker, all who labor on behalf receive just compensation for their efforts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need, that whatever it is they seek will be delivered. Whatever it is that they ask for will be sent to them by the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have passed, that they may always stay in our memories and are at peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our local community, that we continue to take care of our church family. 
and continue to worship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh, good and gracious Father, we turn to you at this moment in time to plead to you to end this pandemic, to spare our loved ones and us from all sickness. Help those who are sick and their families who see them from afar and those who help and care for them. May our Blessed Mother, the health of the sick, Saint Joseph, the protector of your church, intercede for us and hear our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. sacrifice at my hands, who praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, fount of all mercy, look upon our offerings, which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of Saint Joseph, and mercifully grant that the gifts we offer may become the means of protection for those who call upon you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and on the commemoration of Saint Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as a spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, the dominions adore, and the powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with their exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. <laughs>
have for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Defend the Lord your church throughout the spread throughout the world, <clears throat> and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, I pray Timothy, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Saint Joseph, your spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who came into our world, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour. Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of Jesus be with you and your families forever. Who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Since, of course, we can't receive Holy Communion, there's a beautiful tradition called the spiritual communion, which is a prayer that we ask God to come with us spiritually and so we're able to receive Holy Communion. So we say that prayer now. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by St. Joseph's example, cherishing in our hearts the signs of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruits of perpetual peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so it's my very great honor to have and introduce to you, once from technology via point of view, our principal, Mrs. Maldonado. Thank you, Father. I, I think they're home clapping as you introduce me. Yay! Boys and girls. This is a little odd, Father, that I'm not boys and girls right in front of me. So boys and girls, parents, grandparents, parishioners that are visiting us as if it was like a, uh, um, a day where we all get together on a Friday. I, I miss you. I want to let you know that your teachers miss you. Um, it's such a wonderful opportunity this morning to not so much see you all, but know that you all see me. And in my heart and in my mind, I see you as opposed to seeing some of you on a Zoom meeting. So it's, it's such an honor to be able to come up here and let you know that we love you and we miss you. And for those that I have not seen, know that you're in my heart and in my mind all the time. Um, to our cafeteria workers who I haven't seen or even seen on a Zoom or in the neighborhood, we miss you so much and we love you. I know I'm speaking for the children and the faculty and staff as well. Father mentioned um, that he actually promises that we have a party, so we're going to hold him to that. So after today's Mass, make sure you write that down in your journal. Write down that we're having a party, because we will come together again. We will be together again. Um, listen to your mommies and daddies. Do your work and work hard. Ask questions. Have fun. Yes, take breaks. I take breaks. I do. Sometimes I'm doing laundry, but I do take breaks. Pray every day. Pray to St. Joseph, the worker. Thank him for his example. Know that we love you. Father loves you. Father Clark, who's here, so quiet, he loves you. We miss you. Your parents love you. Your community loves you. God loves you. Today, though, we have, we need your help because we decided to sing our alma mater. And Mark LaRosa, who is the choir director, he learned the song in like two days. So we need you to stand up nice and tall if you're the little ones, or if you're a seventh and eighth grader and on your bed like this, sit up nice and tall. And we're going to sing the first verse and the chorus of our alma mater. Nice and tall, parents and visitors, please join us.
Margaret of Antioch, pray, pray for us. us. Thank you. I'd like to just say, Father Clark, wants to say a quick hello, and then we'll finish. Hello, everyone. Um, if I may, for a moment, just as, not simply as a priest, but, but here as a great friend, I echo the words of Father Rasser today, and of course today's feast, to remind us in every respect that work is both a right and a duty. And so therefore, in everything that you do, remember, even though it labors, it takes away from our time of fun and diversion and whatever the case may be, but it's by working that we develop our talents, it's by working that we discover our talents, it's by work by which we grow emotionally, physically, intellectually, spiritually, and not only should we work, and part of our greatest work as Catholics, of course, is the work of prayer, and always devoting time for God, and it is the best work of all. So until we see you again, learn well, and pray well. Just a few words of encouragement to our second graders. I know by now you would have received your first communion, and at this Mass you would have received for the first time as a school part of the family, but we know that that's going to have to be postponed a little bit. And so we're like you. We haven't received, well, the priests have, but everyone else hasn't received Holy Communion either. So we're like you, second graders. We're just waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting that beautiful anticipation that one day all of us again very soon, please, God, will be able to receive Jesus for the first time since March. So we remember you. And of course, our seventh graders, you would have been confirmed by now, but again, we have to wait till October, hopefully and prayerfully. And that day, again, it's a yearning, a longing in our hearts to have Jesus come to us. And of course, our eighth graders will hope and planning something very special for you guys as you graduate from our school and go off into the high school life. So all of us, you know, are little disappointments in life, but they make us strong and they strengthen us in our resolve to do the right thing. And even though sometimes when things are not planned out the way we want them, somehow, someway, God always brings out the good. And always remember that, boys and girls. God always brings out the good, even in difficult times, in our life, in our country, in our world, whatever it happens to be. And so until we meet again, and I think we're going to meet one more time in, in May, I'd like to really do a May crowning for us virtually. So we've got to figure all that out, but we'll let you know how that happens. And then hopefully graduation, and then next September, October, whatever it happens to be, we'll have our first communions and our confirmations, and we'll all be back together again. But until that day, we pray for one another. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. And in this month of May, we sing a special hymn to our Blessed Mother, Queen of Heaven. <laughs>